on today's iCave Dave. The first details on Apple's upcoming M3 Max chips. Apple Music takes on Spotify with personalised discovery stations. And TSMC does Apple a solid. I'm iCave okay, Dave and I simplify Apple so that everything just works for you and if you want the latest Apple leaks, news and rumours, like the video, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell. So straight into our first story today, not content with telling us about M3 Mac Minis that we talked about yesterday, Mark Gurman is now reporting that the M3 Max chips have been tested and we have the core counts, both CPU and GPU. Now this is making me feel more confident that the M3 Mac Mini in developer logs that I mentioned yesterday is actually legit and the big reason for that is that the Mac Mini is likely to come out at the same time as those higher end MacBook Pros because there is the uh, M3 Pro option in the Mac Mini and they're not going to put that out before they put out the MacBook Pros so this will make sense now. But back to those cores, Mark German of Bloomberg of course reports the M3 Max contains 12 CPU cores, 4 efficiency and 8 performance cores. Now that should mean along with the smaller process that the chips are being made on, the battery life should be much more impressive as they are switching out some of those performance cores for efficiency cores, as if Apple Silicon was a slouch on that front anyway. But also remember the lower priced M3 Pro will also get the same CPU setup. The difference comes in the GPU and that's where the M3 Max will have up to 40 GPU cores versus the M3 Pro's 20. And those GPU cores, fingers crossed, will feature the ray tracing technology that Apple really tried hard to put into the A16 but ran into issues late in development. If that issue was anything to do with power consumption and cooling, which is what some of the rumours have suggested, the 3 nanometer process will be a massive win for this too. The chances are that we will see these Macs released early in 2024 with the base M3 chips releasing in an iMac Mac and a MacBook Pro 13 inch around October this year. Now I could see the higher tier MacBook Pros coming in, I don't know, a spring event, and then of course our Ultra Chips at WWDC, so that's our Mac Studio and our Mac Pro, and perhaps, just perhaps, we could be back on the annual upgrade cycle that I've dreamed of with M4 next October. Is that too much to ask, Apple? Is it too much to ask? I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm fine, it's okay. Next up, Apple is finally addressing the biggest weakness of Apple Music, according to all the wrong people who still think that Spotify is somehow better. Discovery of new music has always been the biggest thing that Spotify users have pointed to on the platform that keeps them on there. But yesterday, with zero fanfare, not even a post on the newsroom, Apple dropped this little discovery station on your music app. That's right, you can check it now. Don't! Obviously finish watching my video first. I need that sweet sweet watch time, but I'll remind you at the end I promise don't want you to forget and now you have to wait until the end of the video to see if I remember Berate me in the comments if I forget but back to the Apple news Apple has always had far better sound quality for its basic music streaming than Spotify the codecs that Apple use are just straight up better and especially if you use AirPods you absolutely need to be using Apple Music over Spotify. The sound quality is quite noticeable. Plus you get Apple lossless and spatial audio at no extra costs, so let's be honest, you know it's the right choice. If you are a Spotify user over Apple Music, do let me know what's keeping you from switching down in those comments, because I'm Honestly, I'm lost. I, I don't know why you would. Next, it seems that TSMC is not charging Apple for failed chips on its new 3 nanometer process. Why is this news? Well, normally chip fabricators will charge the client for every chip, errors or not, on the die. But it seems that TSMC is waiving this for Apple this year. Now, it could be something to do with the fact that Apple has bought out the entire production capacity for that first year, which will basically have funded the upgrades for TSMC, and that is a major investment. But it also gives Apple a major advantage of having the only three nanometer chips on the market. But the more interesting part, at least for me, is that it basically confirms that yes, both A17 and M3 pretty much 100% will be on 3 nanometer, which I was becoming skeptical of. That means that this year's iPhones will probably get way more efficient, the iPhone 14 series hasn't been great on battery, and the Macs will likely get a big performance boost, and that makes me happy. Now I just need to work out how I can afford new toys. iCaveDave.com forward slash Patreon. Just saying. Even a subscribe and ringing the bell would help. Thanks, Quasimodo. And a staple of this channel is answering your questions from the comments. So if you've got one, use hashtag iCaveAnswers down there. Uh, it's on the screen right now. That's what you need to do. And some people that have already done that, Team Kinetics, have asked iCaveAnswers. Apple Watch Ultra questions. Do you think there's demand for a smaller Apple Watch? 
would Apple make it? Do you think we'll see an Apple Watch Ultra 2 this year? Now we're going to take this in two parts. So the do we think we'll see a new Apple Watch Ultra this year? I think we will because um, we've already been hearing the rumors that it's going to be coming in that black titanium. We, we spoke about this one yesterday. It does look pretty sick in black. I'm not going to lie. Um, some people are saying they don't like the orange action button. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, orange and black always looks good. It's basically Deathstroke. There's nothing wrong with that at all. It's also McLaren. I like these colors. Um, in terms of a smaller Apple Watch Ultra though, I think the kind of the whole point of the Apple Watch Ultra is that you would be using it during like quite extreme activities and obviously Team Kinetics is like a parkour group. Um, so I understand like you need to be able to see this thing on the go. It has that big flat display. It's also more rugged um, because the, the flat display somehow is stronger. I guess the, the glass isn't protruding over the surface, but I think yeah, you need to be able to have that big display to also be able to give it the bigger battery life, which is another big feature of the Apple Watch Ultra. Potentially with the S9 chip coming this year, it might mean that um, you could get good battery life out of a smaller device, but I'm going to be honest, I don't see it happening. Um, let me know in the comments, would anyone actually want a smaller Apple Watch Ultra? I think the Ultra kind of meant biggest and best. Um, I don't know. I could be wrong on that one. And also from Team Kinetics, uh, IK Vances, do you think we'll ever see a huge wow moment with the iPhone release again? Have smartphones settled into an accepted form factor and feature set enough now to make them predictable? Or are Apple deliberately making more incremental but still significant upgrades to the iPhone to avoid people not upgrading in an S year? So I think uh, this is an interesting one as well. I think we have got to the point where we kind of know what a smartphone does. I think some of the stuff that we might see in future, I, I think potentially next year's iPhone, we might see a separation of cameras where we actually get one near the bottom of the device. And I know that sounds really, really weird, but if you separate those uh, cameras out from the top and the bottom of the device, they're about the same distance apart as your eyes, which means you could capture 3D video for it. And when Apple has got vision out uh, and available, I think capturing 3D video might be a really good idea because you can then play it back on your vision and you don't have to necessarily wear the stupid thing on your face while you record your kid's birthday party. That is something that I thought was actually coming out way, way back. Do you remember when the iPod Touch got the little nubbin at the bottom that you could attach like a wrist strap to? When I saw those designs, I thought maybe this is going to be a 3D camera where you get the lenses at opposite ends. I don't know. Uh, I think it's going to get all schmeary and it's going to make some really weird looking case designs, but there we go. Uh, I think that's something that Apple could look at in future and that would be quite a nice big upgrade, but obviously you wouldn't be able to play back 3D content on the phone itself. You would need to have vision in order to replay it in 3D. Um, but otherwise, I don't think the SEA thing is really as much of a thing now. The fact that phone upgrades have become more incremental is probably good for consumers because it doesn't mean that you need to rush out and buy a new phone every single year. As I said yesterday, I don't think Apple even intends for people to buy a new device every year. Every two years, every three years, every four years is absolutely acceptable. The devices keep going. My Apple Watch is the Apple Watch SE, the original one. And I bought this on release day and I've been wearing it every day since and it's still absolutely capable for what I need. Am I tempted to go up to the slightly bigger screen that we get on the 7s and the 8s? Maybe, but I'll probably buy a used one because I don't need to get the, the very, very quick stuff. But I would quite like to have some of those other um, health features. And I think that's what we're going to see with the iPhones is that until we get to that new like breakthrough moment, which I don't think is going to come from Apple, someone else will do a form factor. It's not going to be foldable, I don't think, because foldables absolutely suck and I've, I've seen them in person and even the current ones when they're at all folded like the the Z folds um, they're all ripply across the whole screen it's not just the fold in the middle not just the crease the whole screen looks rippled in different directions it's horrible I hate them but in terms of a big huge wow moment for a phone again I think we might have kind of plateaued it's not a case of plateau they will never get any better it's just that any improvements are going to be pretty incremental because We've already got cameras on them, we've got front-facing cameras, we've got video calling, we've got... What else would you want to see in a phone? Um, I know everyone keeps saying customizability and, you know, a redesign of the interface. The interface works really well as it is. The reason that we had the big redesign from uh, iOS 6 to 7 is because it looked kind of vintage -y and now we're moving into a, 
a world where people understand computers. Those first iPhones were designed so that everything looked familiar, so you understood what a calendar was, what the game center was, with that kind of felt base. We don't need skeuomorphism anymore because people now understand what the device is. So things don't need to look like they did before because they aren't what they were before. Big leaps in the iPhone? Probably not. We'll get the performance. I do think something along the lines of a Samsung DeX where you could kind of use your iPhone as the core of your computing world and you dock it and maybe Apple TV becomes like a main screen and you have like a macOS style interface would be pretty fun. But I think that's about as far as it would go. So thanks to the Patreons for helping to support the channel and thank you for watching this video. I am trying to do very much daily content this week uh, because I'm off work, it's nice, and I have a little bit more time to play around with stuff. If you thought that I was going to forget to remind you about Apple Music, think again. You can now look at your Apple Music app and find your discovery station and let me know what the first song is down in the comments section with hashtag discovery so that I know that you're epic and stayed till the end. Want the latest Apple news leaks and rumours? Subscribe and ring the bell.